wicked, wicked fly. Welcome to this new season of the Have a Cup of Jahani podcast. So I want to title this new season that I'm embarking on with I'm growing. So this is going to be the season of growth. And um, that's what I'm going to share with you throughout the season. So I thank you for coming over here and sitting with me. And I hope you enjoy. Hello, everyone. So here's the situation. Recently, I had somebody, and not just that person, also my husband, but I had somebody say to me, wow, you're very patient. That's the second time I heard it. First was from my husband, who knows me a lot. He knows a lot of aspects of me. And then somebody that doesn't necessarily know all the aspects of me, but they noted that as well. So having heard that for the second time prompted me to go back and think of a time when I had very little, if any at all, I wonder, which made me think, how did I go about acquiring this patience that people see me having? So when I didn't have any patience, I, I, I knew I was, I was self-aware that was an issue that I had. And it was when I was younger. So I just knew because just certain things just will set me off. And when I say set me off, set me off to feel either that that burning anger, silent anger inside where I will uh, do the silent treatment or actually have uh, outbursts. And, and that happened whenever I had to wait on something. Like even to this day, I dislike waiting, uh, but I'm a little bit more mature about it. And now I have books on my phone <laughs> and a Kindle that I pretty much take almost everywhere. So I have something to do if I have to wait for things, but it's it's very rare that I have to wait for things now. And and also when things wouldn't go my way, which I think is another aspect of having that patience, that grace, right, to to wait for for things to be what they are and to have that pause to enjoy them for being what they are, not necessarily what you wanted them to be. Where When I was younger, those were the two things that will really set me off. And I would have called them back then my pet peeves. And now I know that those were just things that I needed to work when it comes to myself, just learning how to have that pause and be graceful about it. Let me caveat this with saying what I said in the last episode, that this is something that will be an forever work in progress when it comes to me, because like, I'm just realizing that I did some things without knowing to work on that, on having that patience, having that grace to take a pause before reacting when I didn't have it back then. So it took me years because I'm talking when I was in my twenties. So uh, yeah, it took me a lot of years. I'm not going to say my age, but it took me a lot of years, okay, uh, to get where I'm at with the patience. But let me tell you some of the actions that that I took. Now, looking back, hindsight is 2020, folks. So this is not me saying I am perfect. If you listen to my episodes, you will know I am not. So here it is, the actions that I took. So a lot of the things just fell on my lap. Let me explain. I had a child. Yes, I had a child. I, I became pregnant with my son at the age of 20 and I had him like a month. No, not even a month because uh, our birthdays were supposed to be the same. I was trying to hold on to that baby in my belly for the longest because I wanted us both to have the same birthday. But uh, he was coming out kicking and screaming a week prior. I was literally breastfeeding him when my sister called and said, hey, you're 21, you can drink legally now. And I looked at this suckling baby and I was like, uh, yeah, no, I think I'm going to have to wait on that. <laughs> so that was the one thing that kind of fell on my lap. <laughs> if you must, that taught me patience. And for all parents out there, I think you may agree with me on this, that it's something about uh, that baby that just puts things into perspective for parents, right? And um, now you know that it's not all about you, but most importantly, you know that this little, this little human being, right, that you have here that has half of your genetic makeup, it's not going to be as fast as you. 
<laughs> because they're just starting out their lives, you know. They are they're figuring things out. Duh, they're babies, you know, they gotta crawl before they walk. So just going through that and having to learn to have that grace with my son, it kind of like little by little, it molded me into a person that just has a little bit more patience. Because once again, you know, when you walk and come on, if y'all are parents, you know this, right? You grab that, that little child's little chubby little hand and your steps are like, 10 or 20 of their baby steps. So you do have to literally slow down your life when you have a child. It it forces you. So having a child was the first thing that happened to me that helped me to gain patience. The other thing was having pets. It's like almost like children and pets go hand in hand. At least it did for me. So I wanted my son to have a a dog uh, growing up. I just, I felt it was something important for him to have this, this other living creature being that he can be compassionate and empathetic towards and, and have some sort of responsibility as well uh, with caring for them. I just, I wanted him to have that experience. So at a very early age, we went to a humane society and we rescued our first dog, Kalana. Bless his heart. He is in the clouds right now. He's in heaven for those that believe that. I just think he's like in a little rainbow, just eating bones every single day. But yeah, so we got Talana and and having him, once again, it's almost like the way that I tell my husband, because my husband didn't grow up with pets. It's like having pets, it's like having children, period, for always, forever. And they're most likely never going to get out of that stage. They're like your forever babies. That's how I feel pets, dogs and cats. That's been my experience. Okay. So having pets was one of those things because especially that was my first pet as it was uh, the first pet for my child as well. So we had to walk it and Kalana is much more, it's a lot like the dog that I have now, John, which is, if you feel me, you feel me on this one, right? Let me know. You have to be there for 10 minutes before they find the right pee spot. I'm like, what the... What is going on? It's grass. It's like, go for it. It's grass. What else do you want? Do you want a specific type of grass to pee on? You know, I mean, come on. So if that doesn't work your patience and help you to be patient, I don't know what does, but just waiting out there, oh goodness. And goodness gracious, if it's raining or if it's outside in the elements and you have to like, oh goodness, that really tries my patience. So as you can see, (laughs) having children and having pets are are things that happen to some people and which like helps them to exercise the patience. So those were the two things that kind of fell on my lap. The third one that I want to talk about is about my step babies, my additional babies, as I call them. They didn't necessarily fall on my lap because I vetted my husband very well. And I knew about them and I I hung up with them before, but they teach you patience in a whole different way. Because while my son has a lot of me in him that I can easily identify and, and understand, it's different with my additional babies because we don't necessarily share traits and, and personality traits or mannerisms or things like that. So I had to learn about them. You're meeting somebody new and that's what happened and you're trying to get to know them. But that process takes time because you all know there's that honeymoon phase, right? When you meet somebody and they're in their best behavior and they have this facade that they want to show you. But eventually once they get comfortable, that's when the real, real comes out. And that that is exactly what happened with the with my additional babies because it, it took me a while. So it's that patience, that grace that I had to have with me 
and with them and that self-talk to understand, look, you're going to have to learn about them. You're going to have to learn them, learn what makes them tick, learn the, what they like, what they dislike, and give them their space and, and have patience with them and give them that grace. And and I married my husband later in life. I like to say I'm a late bloomer because it took me a while to get married. So this happened later on. So here I am in my 30s thinking that I had it all figured out because I'm already a mildly okay patient person because I, I single mothered a child and and had like by then four pets and not all at once. And But I had all that experience that the universe had dropped on my lap so that way it can help me getting my patient situation together. And here come these bountiful buzzers of joy into my doorstep. And it's like, no, you're wrong. (laughs) You're not as patient as you think. Try again. And I had to. And it's like, like, I feel now after, after knowing them for this long and being married to my husband for this long, like I know them, but still every time they come over, and they come over for long stints. It's like, it's always something new that I have to learn about them because they're growing, you know, they're growing. They're, they're, they're finding themselves, figuring out what kind of grown ups they want to be, what kind of person they want to be, their identities and all of that. So every single time I see them, I learn something new about them. But that first phase of, of us learning one another, that was tough. That was tough. That really tested my patience. So I would say like out of uh, being being a mom to my own genetic child, to even being a pet mom, I, I think my hardest challenge when it comes to acquiring the patience that I have now in this phase of my life, I think the hardest test was with my, my additional babies. And they really, they tested me to my limits. I won't, I, I'm like, I feel like I'm receiving an Oscar. I want to thank my additional babies for teaching me the patience that I have right now. Thank you. I really appreciate y'all. I love y'all. Y'all are so cute. <laughs> Boom. That's my speech. But yeah, so I don't know if there are any step parents out there listening to me, but if you are, drop a note in the comments. Let me know because I don't think we talk about this as often. How different that relationship is. And it was to a point, let me share something with you where me and and my additional baby girl, it was just like, it was a lot of conflict there. And I had to sit her down and I was like, look, mama, I'm not trying to replace your mom here. I, I know I am not that person and I will never be that person. And we had to have this sit down because I just... I I felt it in her vibe and the way that she was pushing back on some of the things that I was trying to do and or or talk about or kind of like help her with some things. And and I had to like do that, just lay that down. And I wish I would have done that at the beginning of meeting them because I think it would have like taken out a lot of heartache of 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 us trying to get to know one another. But This happened, I want to say a year or two ago, and I sat her down and I was like, I'm not here to replace your mom. Never. I was like, I know what it is to be a mom. I'm a mom to that one over there. And I pointed at my son. I was like, "Uh, but I am an additional parent to you. I explained to her. And while you're here in this household, I want you to be safe. I want you to be healthy, happy, nourished. And uh, there's some things that you know, we have implemented in the household. So that way those things happen to everyone that is under this roof, you know, just such as, you know, eating and things like that, you know, and they're just being safe with what we do online and all of that. So, because when they get to a certain age, folks, it's, it's almost like children think they know it all. And that happened to my son as well, but my son is a lot like me. So I was able to to handle that a little bit better. But once again, this is this whole personality that um, there are no traits of me in them. So I have to figure them all out um, as if I'm meeting a brand new person. And that, that third thing that just not necessarily fell on my lap, but 
that third test that really tested my patience and resiliency and and made me be a more graceful person that really are my additional babies. All right. So the fourth thing that I think helped me out in an indirect way was when I was reading The Four Agreements. And I don't know if anybody has read this book, but a while back I read The Four Agreements. And this was when my son was in the toddler era, when I had a few few snippets of time here to read. And, And I read that book. And for me, that book changed the perspective that I had when it comes to how I react to things. And I think our reaction to the world, it's it's interlinked with that patience, with that grace. And let me explain why. That is because when we understand that the actions of others are not necessarily because of you, but it's because of them and something that they're going through, then you are going to be more patient and more graceful towards that person and towards your own feelings when they when they surface, when you hear certain things and you're able to talk yourself down from having a, a counterproductive reaction when dealing with that other person and possibly burning a bridge in that relationship. So when I read that book, it really changed my perception of, of what people say or when they quote unquote, talked about me. And that made me a more patient and graceful person. And that was so helpful. Even to this day, I remind myself two things, but let me say the first one because it has to do with this book. And that is when I hear something that I have this reaction that just frothes up from my chest and I want to spew out some hurtful words, I remind myself, it's not about you. Or I say, they probably have a bad day. You know, that's, those are the things that I'm saying inside my head to kind of talk myself down. I mostly say that one a lot. Uh, they're probably having a bad day. Or, you know what? Just go ahead and disengage. And that's what I do more often than not nowadays. And it has to do with learning and, and having that patience that I got from all those experiences that I mentioned before because now I'm able to look at them and as opposed to being angry at what they said or their reactions, now I can empathize and and think of and try to put myself in their shoes as to why they're having such a poor reaction. And as opposed to getting angry, I become empathetic. The other thing that I often say when I encounter something like that, and I encounter this in the internet, uh, social media, in person, in passing, and um, it's quite often, especially lately, it's it's a lot of hurtful things being said out there. So I'm telling you folks, perhaps, you know, look into these things that help me out, see if they will help you out as well. So the last thing that, that helped me out in the Other thing that I say, and I remind myself whenever I encounter hurtful comments or actions from other people is that everyone wears a mask to survive. And my therapist, bless her heart, that was the best decision of my life, by the way, to get a therapist. So she told me that because I was explaining to her what a hard time I was having with um, some folks at work and they're dealing my patience too. You know, they're testing that patience of mine. And and I was explaining to her like uh, so much pushback and I'm like, Jesus, all I'm trying to do here is just help us all out, you know, and help us all out to help this, this company to get better and, you know, try to bring a community together of folks. So that way we can accomplish these tasks and this mission. And, and when I get pushback from that, because I feel like I am genuinely trying to help the team and somebody is pushing back on that, I react poorly as well. And I know that about myself. Like I said, the other thing that I said is what my therapist told me when I was telling her about these issues. And she was like, we all wear masks for survival. And that resonated with me so much. And once again, it goes back to changing my perception of people 
and their reactions. It just, it helps with, it helps me with that. So indirectly, it helps me with the patient situation because now I, I, I do that pause. I give them that grace. I change my tone of voice and, and I just think, you know, before reacting, not all the time, God, not all the time. Sometimes I react. Sometimes that little voice is not loud enough in my head. Okay. I don't ever want someone to listen to this episode and think like, oh, she got it all together. She figured it out. No, 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 no folks. I'm still working on this, but I'm telling you what has helped me thus far. So yeah. So it helps me to take that pause and have feel empathy at the very least for that person and what they're going through, what they could possibly be going through for something like that to come out their mouth. So folks, let me go ahead and sum this up. So while I'm still working on my patience, and this is going to be an everlasting work in progress until I die. But thankfully, I had some things that fell on my lap, like my child, being a parent, being a single parent, that really tested my patience. Being a pet parent to dogs and cats, oof, 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 oof. Yes, I'll do another episode about cats because they they deserve their own episode. And the hardest test that I had was being a stepmom. Oof, 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 oof. That right there was the ultimate test of patience. And uh, thankfully, I barely pass. <laughs> and now here are the fruits of the labor. Somebody that is kind of patient and doesn't go off as often. Yay! <laughs> But if you are listening and you know that this is something that you struggle with, you may want to give the four agreements a chance, read it, talking to other people, talking to professionals such as a therapist, a counselor. Oof. I I completely recommend that. I genuinely wholeheartedly recommend that. It will it will help you to at the very least change your perspective on certain things so that way you can step into the world a little bit more graceful with more patience for yourself and for others. And saying all of that, I thank you once again. You could have gone anywhere else, but you chose to listen to this one. Thank you. And can I count on you for the next one? Yes? Okay. I'll see you later. Bye. Oh, we could, we could fly. Thank you so much for listening. Don't forget to follow and subscribe to the show. See you on the next episode. Bye. Oh, we could, we could fly. Oh, we could, we could fly.